This concludes the batting practice portion of today's activities. Once again, we are getting ready to start a five inning inter-squad scrimmage. Uh, we will be moving the Facebook stream over to the main Purdue Athletics page. So if you would like to continue watching, and we do thank you for watching currently, uh, but moving over to the Purdue Athletics Facebook page for the scrimmage portion.
Baseball team. I am Connor Hoke, and I will be bringing all of the action today. Uh, first, with the setup as far as what today will look like. Obviously, scrimmage is a little different than your traditional game. It will be a five inning scrimmage. Uh, each team will have three pitchers that will pitch, two that will see two total innings, and then the third pitcher for each team will pitch the fifth and final. As you can see, it will be gold versus gray today. The Boilermakers in the gold unis representing the home team and then those in the gray representing the way away. 
So the Boilermakers getting their first real live action of fall 2020, obviously, has been a tumultuous season for the, or year for the Boilermakers for baseball. A season cut short last year by the COVID-19 virus. So the Boilermakers looking to get on the field. As you can see, the lineup for the gold Boilermakers who will be in the field to start. As we take a look at the pitcher on the mound for the Boilermakers, that will be Avery Cook. Cook, a freshman, a 6'6", 235-pound freshman from Utica, New York. So Cook will get the nod to start and leading off for the gray team will be Mike Bolton, Jr. First pitch ball from Cook. Strike from Cook, makes the count one and one. And a swing and miss from Bolton Jr. makes it a one-two count. be a strikeout the first of the day for Avery Cook. So a nice start for the freshman on the mound. One out in the top of the first inning. And that will bring Jack Firestone to the plate. Firestone a freshman. As that's a first pitch ball. This one swung on and hit foul by Firestone up over the building. So that will make it a 1-1 one, one count. This one swung on, hit hard out into deep center field, and that will be pulled in by the veteran Skyler Hunter. So two outs here in the top of the first. Still scoreless, as you can see Firestone getting some instruction and heading back to the dugout. And so now that will bring up Ben Nissel. Nissel, the powerful righty for the Boilermakers. Was off to a good start last season, batting 320 on the year. As Cook delivers a ball. Strike from Cook. 
Once again, if you're just joining us, today is the first of the fall ball scrimmages for Purdue baseball. It'll be five innings today. As this one swung on and hit foul by Nissel. a strikeout so two strikeouts in the first frame for the freshman and Avery Cook and he will retire the side scoreless so we will head to the bottom of the first inning and get a look at the gold team for the first time at the plate Welcome back, bottom of the first inning here in today's fall ball scrimmage as we get to take a look at the great team Boilermakers in the field for the first time as you see the pitch delivered from Logan Denzizen. Denzizen, another freshman as you see a pair of young arms here for the Boilermakers to start today's scrimmage. And the man at the plate leading off for the gold team that is Tyler Acosta. to the junior out of Barrington, Illinois. And Costa is retired. And that is one of the rules in effect for the Boilermakers today. Uh, is Coach Goff wanting his batters to stand in the box. So if Boilermakers step out of the box on a hit by pitch, they are out, but it does not count against the out total. So the goal team has zero outs officially. As uh, Coach Goff really trying to instill his Boilermakers staying tough in the box with each at bat. 
but that will bring Ryan Howe to the plate for Purdue, or for the gold team, rather. As this one is swung on and hit, foul over the first base dugout. a sophomore for the Boilermakers. As that one is up high and out of the box, makes it 2-2. As Dan Zeisen getting settled in on the mound. Today marks the first time that Purdue fans are able to get a, a look at the 2020 Boilermaker roster. And that one outside. So Ryan Howe is the first Boilermaker to reach base for the gold team. As he'll draw the walk and trot down to first. That will bring Skylar Hunter to the plate now for the gold team as Dan Zeisen settles back in on the mound. And Howe will go, gets away from the catcher, and Howe. Rounding towards third, throw in, and he is safe. So Ryan Howe able to extend that out. And now all of a sudden, the goal team with a runner in scoring position and Skylar Hunter at the plate. And it looks like that got past Steve Ramirez, who's behind the plate as you take a second look at Howe just sliding in under the tag. And this is something that has been a staple of Boilermaker baseball over the last four years. Aggressive base running, wanting to force the defense to have to make plays. As that one is swung on and hit into the dirt for a foul by Hunter. As you take a look at Dan's eyes in there. Good test for the freshman. And that one is just outside. So 2 1 count. Check swing from Hunter sends that foul. Howe still on third. You can see Skylar Hunter. Skylar Hunter, one of the vets on this roster. A senior. Has played a lot of baseball over the years for the Boilermakers. And he'll take that one off the arm. So it is a walk and a hit by pitch that allows two base runners on for the gold team. So runners on the corners now as Zach Fasho will step in now to the box and Dan Zeisen trying to get himself out of the jam. As you can see Fasha, a catcher. 6'1 senior, hails from Brampton, Ontario. Another guy who showed to have quite a bit of power from the moment that he stepped on campus for the Boilermakers. As the 
the throw from Dan Zeisen to first. Hunter's able to get in in time. Skyler Hunter is an aggressive base runner, has stolen a lot of bases over the course of his career for the Boilermakers, and he's going to go here. Ramirez throws it down to second, not able to get him in time, and that will bring Ryan Howe across the plate. So the goal team on the board first. So they lead 1-0 here in the bottom of the first inning. As you take a second look at that stolen base by Hunter. So, a couple aggressive base running from the gold team to start this scrimmage. Get them a run and the early lead. As Fash is going to swing on that one. It looked like hit and run. And. Fash is going to hit that foul, so Hunter will trot back to second. You see him coming into frame. And it is an 0-2 count for Fasha. Dan Zeisen steps off, looking back at Hunter. Skyler Hunter has spent a lot of his career doing that to a lot of pitchers across the conference. And everybody knows his speed and his aggression and is respected by anyone who steps onto the mound. As another one swung on and hit foul by Fascia. Count stays 0-2. Runner on second. The goal team is up 1-0 here in the bottom of the first inning. Once again, if you're just now joining us, thank you for tuning in. Uh, today's the first of the fall ball scrimmages for the Boilermakers. It'll be five innings. We've got gray and gold today. Each team slated with three pitchers to start. Logan Denzizen on the mound right now for the Boilermakers. Denzizen is going to see two innings today. So an 0-2 count for Zach Fascia, his first at bat of the day, and that one swung on, hit hard into the gap. As that will bring home. Hunter, Fasha's rounding second, going for third, and the throw not in time. So Zach Fasha with the triple and the RBI. A big time swing into right field. And it was Miles Simington who's out there in right field who was not able to track that down, had to chase it to, back to the walls. You can see then the third baseman. That is Mason Gartrick who was not able to apply the tag in time. So a couple big time plays by this gold team have given them the two nothing lead early. And once again, got a man in scoring position in Fascia. And that does bring Kyle LaPlante to the plate now for the gold team. This one gets through the infield, and that will bring home another run. So LaPlante gives the gold team their third run of the inning and their second RBI with the RBI base hit. So the gold team off to a great start here in the bottom of the first inning. And so now that will bring the first baseman, Jake Parr, to the plate for the first time, and he does have a runner on first. and looking over to first. And 
defense. Eisen will throw it over. It's Cam Thompson over there at first base playing for the gray team, but LaPlante able to get in under the tag. LaPlante will go. Ramirez fumbling it off the transition from the glove to throw it to second, so LaPlante in safely. Yet another stolen base for the gold team here in the first inning. Eisen trying to get things settled down. Coach Goff doing some coaching from the third baseline. Obviously, that being a scrimmage, a little bit of a, a different setup than it would be typically for an in season game. As that one's outside from. Dan Zeisen. Jake Parr, another freshman for this Boilmaker squad. An imposing figure at 6'7", 225. Comes to West Lafayette from New Market, Alabama. As this one's in the dirt, LaPlante goes to third and he gets there in time. As you see the socially distanced elbow bump from Coach Goff. And the gold team having a lot of success in their base running here in the first inning. That one's swung on and hit foul by Parr. Great team still looking for their first out of the inning. Parr's going to step out. And then he'll step back into the box. Dan Zeisen with the pitch. And this one's fouled back straight into the net by Parr. Goff praising Jake Parr with his at bat as it's 2 2. And you see timeout from Parr. He'll step off. He does have LaPlante in scoring position at third. He'll hit this one deep towards the first baseline. Symington will pull that down. LaPlante will tag up, and the throw not on target. So Parr does his job, and the gold team does tack on another run, as you're going to see now change as the gray team will come Back to the plate, the goal team heading out onto the field, but they do have a 4-0 lead after the first inning.
Boilermakers to stand in on those close pitches. So Symington is retired. Does not count as an out against the gray team. So they still have zero outs as Cook delivers. And that one gets away from Fascia. So it will be a 1-0 count. As you take a look at Cam Thompson coming to the plate for the first time today for the boil or for the gray team. Responds with a strike to make it one and one. And back to back strikes from Cook make it a one two count for Thompson. No outs. Great team. Was not able to get on base in the first inning as Cook had two strikeouts and a fly out to center. As the count's now evened at two. So Thompson looking to be the first member of the gray team to get on base today. He will not be able to do so as he goes down swinging. Third strikeout of the afternoon for Avery Cook. So now Steve Ramirez will come to the plate as he takes a second look at the strikeout from Cook. Nice location out on the outside. Thompson just not able to get a piece of it. So Ramirez will get his first crack at it today. That one, I'm going to say inside for a ball. And that one up high. So a 2-0 count for Ramirez. Ramirez a junior from San Bernardino, California. And this one swung on, hit towards center field, and will get down just short of Skylar Hunter. So Steve Ramirez, the first member of the gray team to get aboard safely today. And maybe the momentum that the gray team needs to generate some offense here in the top of the second. Once again, if you were just joining us, only five innings today. You can see the score. The gold team able to tack on four runs in the uh, first inning. Uh, both teams have three pitchers that are scheduled to pitch today. As Cook delivers to Fascia. Fascia loses it, and Steve Ramirez is able to get in safely. As Cook delivers, and that is Justin Walker Jr. at the plate, and he flies out into shallow left. So two outs now for the gray team and a runner standing at second. Boilermakers in the field for the gold team out in left field. It's Pat Clohissey, Skylar Hunter in center, Tyler Acosta in right, Kyle LaPlante at third, Evan Albrecht at shortstop, Ryan Howe at second, Jake Parr at first, and then behind the plate is Zach Fascia. Avery Cook, the first of three pitchers that the gold team will have today. And 
And that one is out of the zone. 1-0 count. As you can see, Coach Goff down there at third base, getting plenty of coaching in today. As that one outside makes it a 2-0 count. As it is Mason Gavre. Getting his first at bat today. And this one gets away from Fascia and will allow Ramirez to advance to third. So now the gray team with a runner in scoring position, two outs. 3 0 count for Gavre. And the best opportunity that the gray team has had so far today to put a runner on the board. There's a strike from Avery Cook. Good chance for Avery Cook to show that he can work his way out of a jam as well with the runner standing at third. And they're gonna say a strike. Gavre thought that that was Potentially a ball as he started to make his way towards first, but not the case. So a full count now for Gabre, runner on third. Saw the replay of the last pitch. And this one swung on, hit down the first baseline and foul by Gabre. Gabre Jr. from Tucson, Arizona. Comes to Purdue by way of Paradise Valley Junior College. As this one right up the, the pipe and that's Evan Albrecht not able to make a play at it, diving for it in the dirt. And so the gray team not only stays alive in the inning, but also gets their first runner across as Mason Gavre is able to bring Steve Ramirez across the plate. And so that will now bring Tyler Powers to the plate for the gray team. Garvey's going to go and get there safely. Good throw from Fascia. It looks like it was close, but they're going to rule Garvey safe. As you take a second look at it, Garvey just in under the tag. Definitely a uh, close call. As Tyler Powers is going to lay down a bunt, but it will go foul. Makes the count 1-1. One, one. Certainly something that Tyler Powers has been known for in his time at Purdue. A terrific bunter and has done a terrific job in the field as well for the Boilermakers. Powers a junior, hometown kid from Lafayette. Went to Central Catholic. As he will take a step out of the box. Got a runner in 
Scoring position at second. And he'll get Plunkton head down to first. Looks like Cook just lost the off speed. So after a tough first inning for the gray team, it will get some momentum here as you take a second look at this pitch. This looks like Cook just lost it. So now runners at first and second for the gray team. As stepping up to the plate now is Jake Stadler. Stadler, a freshman from Greenfield, Indiana. Big spot for the freshman to deliver on some offense for the gray team. They do trail 4-1 here in the top of the second. So a 1-1 count. And Cook's pitch outside. Once again, with it being five innings today, you'll see Avery Cooks, or Cook, well, this will be his last Inning pitch today is both he and Dan Zeisen who got the starts pitching two innings. See Corey Brooks next for the gold team. As this one's outside, makes it 3 1. So Stadler with a 3 1 count, an opportunity to Put a couple runs on the board. And he makes a big cut at it into right field and it will one hop and go over the wall. Ground rule double. And Coach Goff pleased with the freshman's clutch hitting will make a shift change so we will see Logan Denzizen once again for his second inning of work. That will do it for Avery Cook today uh, as the gold team clings to a 4-3 lead as we head to the bottom of the second. Bottom of the second inning with action right away as Pat Clohissi is going to drop one in the bucket in the center right field side to lead off for the gold team.
So now he stands on first, and that now brings Evan Albrecht to the plate for the gold team. Logan Denzeisen getting a second inning of work now for the gray squad as that one is long from Ramirez and Lohissi will make it to third base. So continue to see a lot of aggressive base running from both Boilermaker squads here in the inner squad scrimmage. So Lohissi over at third. Albrecht at the plate, as you see, and Ryzen. Dids Eisen's going to deliver. First pitch ball, makes it 2 0 count. And that one's fouled straight back. By Albrecht. So it's a 2 1 count for Albrecht. Does have a runner in scoring position at third. No outs. And will be a walk for Albrecht. So runners on the corners now for the goal team is Tanner Haston will step in. with no outs, runners on the corners. You see Denzeisen, Logan Denzeisen, freshman, getting two innings of work today. Both teams with inning limits on their pitchers as there's the throw to second, and they are going to say Albrecht is safe. Nice tag attempt by powers but not able to get it there in time. So now runners second and third for Haston. Strike. Dan Ryzen. Dan Zizen. Excuse me. Makes it an 0 1 count for Haston. Bottom of the second inning. Runner at second. Haston will go down looking. And that's the first strikeout for the freshman, Logan Danzizen. And so now Jeremy Short will come to the plate for the gold team. Take a second look at that strikeout. So one out. Reminder that we are, with it being a fall ball scrimmage, only playing five innings. Uh, 
some of it being situational as Hallbrook's going to get caught in the rundown. And he is out. As Walker Jr. and Gavre able to team up to throw Albrecht out headed to third as you can see teaching moment there with coach Goff you can see so two outs now for the gold team and this one swung on hit hard by Short but a nice snag by Tyler Powers and over at second, and so that will do it for the gray team. And we will head to the top of the third to see Corey Brooks on the mound for the first time for the gold team today. Thank you. Top of the third inning, Corey Brooks getting his first action of today's fall ball scrimmage. As Mike Bolton Jr. getting his second at bat of the afternoon. Bolton struck out back in the first inning. Bolton, a freshman from Calumet City, Illinois. One of a number of Freshman getting looks in today's fall ball scrimmage. As you do see, Corey Brooks. Brooks, one of the more experienced arms coming back in the lineup from last season. It was two and two in the abbreviated 20, 20 season. The 5-1-2 ERA. Outside makes it 2 2. So Brooks, the 2 2 count. And Bolton Jr. hits this one out into left field and it will be corralled by Clohissey. In the field today for the gold team, it is. Clohissey in left, Hunter in center, Tyler Acosta out there in right. At third base, it's 
LaPlante, Evan Albrecht, shortstop at second base, Ryan Howe, Jake Parr at first, and behind the plate, Zach Fascia. As this one's swung on and hit high and foul. That is Jack Firestone. Firestone out in left field today for the gray team. Firestone flew out to deep center in his last at bat. One one count for Firestone. He'll swing through that pitch from Brooks to make it 1-2. Brooks did record a team-high 16 strikeouts last season. For the Boilermakers. Obviously, Purdue only played 14 games but is a, a promising arm in the bullpen for Coach Goff in his second season at the helm for the Boilermakers. Back-to-back -back balls will make this a full count. So Firestone with an opportunity to get aboard. be a ball. So Firestone draws the walk and will head down to first base and that puts a runner on for the gray team. And this will bring Ben Nissel to the plate. Brooks will throw one over to Jake Parr at first, but Firestone in, in time. As we'll go back to first. Brooks knows that this is a Purdue team in general that wants to be aggressive in its base running. and Firestone's taking a nice lead from first. And he will go. Ball gets away from the outstretched glove of Ryan Howe, who also loses his glove in the process. And Firestone will be safely aboard at second. Take a second look at it. Bit of a collision between Firestone and Howe. So a runner in scoring position now for Nissel, and Nissel is known for having a quite a bit of power. So a good opportunity for the gray team to put a run on the board here in the top of the third. As Nissel will swing through that one. It'll be a 1-1 one, one count. As Firestone will go and is safe. LaPlante not able to tag in time. So the freshman from Zinesville, Indiana, getting aggressive with his base running and moving closer and closer to home plate. Just take a second look at it. And 
as the infield comes in for the Boilermakers. Nissel swings through it and misses. To make it 2-2. And with one out, Coach Goff shouting instructions to Nissel. As this one's grounded into the dugout by Nissel. So with a 2-2 count, Brooks delivers outside, full count. Nissel last year batted 320 on the season. Had six RBIs. And this one swung on, hit hard. Down the third baseline and foul. Clohissi able to track that down. So the count stays full. Infield in for the gold team. Corey Brooks trying to get himself out of the jam. And this one swung on and fouled down the first baseline by Nissel. Nissel doing a nice job of staying alive in the at bat. So Nissel with a full count and a runner at third. Fouled back into the wall by Nissel. Just doing a nice job of keeping the at bat alive. Brooks trying to work to get him out. And Nissel's patience will pay off. He'll draw the walk. So runners on the corner now with Nissel at first and Firestone. At third. Coach Goff shouting out instructions to the defense. And so now that will bring Miles Symington to the plate. Symington with an opportunity to drive in a run. This one swung on, hit hard, but foul down the first base line by Symington. Symington brings a lot of power to the Boilermaker lineup. Batted 231 last season. Did drive home 10 RBIs. Tied for second best. Symington's a junior out of Bloomington, Illinois. And this one's popped straight up out into shallow left field. Kalissi will wave off Albrecht and pull it in for the second out of the inning. So the gray team not able to bring in Firestone from third just yet. As now Cam Thompson will step back into the plate. Yeah. 
as Nissel will take off, caught in the rundown. They're gonna try to steal home. And nice job by Jake Parr, recognizing that Firestone was coming from third. Gets it to Fascia, and the score attempt from Firestone snuffed out. So the goal defense holds. They retain the lead as we head to the bottom of the third inning. Bottom of the third inning, new pitcher for the gray team. That is Kyle Wade. And that one is high from Wade. Wade, a 6'2 sophomore out of Kokomo, Indiana. As it's Cade Hole at the plate for the goal team and he will get safely aboard with a base hit. So Hole, the freshman from Huntley, Missouri, reaches aboard safely for the goal team to lead off. And so now Tyler Acosta will step up to the plate for the goal team. Out in the field today for the gray team out in the left, it's Jack Firestone. Mike Bolton Jr. in center. Ben Nissel in right. At third base, it's Mason Gavre. Justin Walker Jr. at short. Tyler Powers at second as you see him get hole there on the steal attempt. Tagging him up from second. And then at first, it's Cam Thompson. And then behind the plate is Steve Ramirez. As Costa check swings, they throw it back to first. Hole able to get back in time. So Acosta with a runner at first. Wade with the pitch, and that is 
a strike. So one two count for Acosta. Here in the bottom of the third inning. As Wade's gonna fire over to Camp Thompson at first, but whole able to get there before the tag. If you are just joining us, welcome uh, tonight, or today the first of the fall ball scrimmages for the 2020 fall season for the Purdue Boilermakers. Five innings today as Hole's gonna go again. This time airmailed from Ramirez at catcher as Bolton will throw one from center but Hole able to get there in time. So Cade Hole with some aggressive base running. Something that Boilermaker fans are accustomed to seeing from this Purdue team. And it was a trend that was brought over by Coach Mark Wazikowski, obviously. Coach Goff on that staff for two seasons and now in his second year at the head of the program. But that attacking style of offense and the base running, something that's been constant here in West Lafayette for the previous four years as Acosta is going down swinging. So two outs, runner on third for the gold team. And Ryan Howe coming to the plate. Swings through the first pitch. So 0 1 count. And as you take a look at Hole standing at third, looking to add to the gold team's lead. Gold team got off to a fast start in the first inning. Put four on the board, but not been able to put any more on since. As that one in the dirt a little bit, but a nice job by Ramirez to keep it from getting behind him. And nice pitch from Kyle Wade. Makes it one, two. As Howe's gonna call for time, step out of the box to readjust his gloves. And he'll step back in. He does have Kate Hole standing at third. Infield in for the gray team. And that one upstairs, Howe holds off. This one swung on, hit hard by Howe off the glove of Walker Jr. and into the outfield as Hole will score from third, adding on to the gray team or the gold team's lead. And Ryan Howe safely aboard at first. Walker Jr. had an opportunity at it, just let it slip through his fingers. So now Howe standing at first, and it is 5-3. Gold team leading with two outs in the bottom of the third. And Skyler Hunter about ready to step in for the gold team. Pitch. This one swung on, hit down the third base line off of the pole from Hunter. I don't think that Skylar Hunter could do that again if you gave him 100 swings. The 
that makes it an 0-1 count for the senior. As Wade fires one over to first, Ryan Howe back in plenty of time. And they're actually going to say that Howe did not get back in time. And that so a nice job by Kyle Wade from the mound, but Cam Thompson able to apply the tag quickly at first. It's now a 1-1 count for Hunter. Still two outs. Wade responds with a strike, one, two. That pitch in the dirt evens the count at two. You see Skyler Hunter. That one swung on, hit foul down the third base line. Hunter led the Boilermakers last year with five doubles. Batted 315 in the 14 games that he appeared in. Has long been a staple of the lineup for the Boilermakers. He swings in the dirt, and they'll throw it down to the first baseline, and that'll do it for the goal team here in the bottom of the third. So we head to the top of the fourth with Corey Brooks coming out for another inning of work. Top of the fourth inning. Corey Brooks out for another inning of work for the gold team. He'll be getting two innings today. As Cam Thompson hits that one foul. A couple changes in the outfield for the gold team as Tanner Haston is now in right and Acosta moves over to center field. Skyler Hunter's day is done, it would appear. Jeremy Schwark now in for Zach Fascia behind the plate as well. As Fascia moves over to first. Cade Hole now at second. So the Boilermakers making a couple adjustments 
with the gold team making a couple adjustments as this one swung on by Thompson and hit into the left field corner. And he will turn that into a stand-up double. So Thompson with a nice swing and he gets on base to lead off for the great team here in the top of the fourth inning. So now Steve Ramirez will come to the plate. So a 1 0 count for Ramirez. Ramirez swings, hits one into right field. It will be caught by Haston, but it will allow for Thompson to tag up and advance to third. So nice job by Ramirez, able to advance a runner. As you can see, Haston with the play out there and right. It's now Justin Walker Jr. Steps in for the gray team. Walker Jr., a Lafayette native. The junior attended Lafayette Jeff and, and spent some time down south at Indiana University before transferring back home, which, as you know, always delights Boilermaker fans. The 1 0 count for Walker Jr. And this one in the dirt gets away from Shork and will allow Thompson to come all the way from third. So a run added for the gray team makes it 5 4. Shork just wasn't able to handle that one. Strike from Brooks makes it 2 1. That one swung on, hit foul by Walker Jr. And now a full count for Walker Jr. Nobody on, one out. Jr. will draw the walk. So he'll trot down to first base. And that will bring Mason Gavre to the plate for the gray team. A reminder that this is a five inning fall ball scrimmage today. Corey Brooks in his second inning of work. Avery Cook started for the gold team, went two innings. So the first two pitchers of the rotation getting two innings of work for the gold team, and then the third pitcher today will be Will Tanua to, to Uta, uh, the freshman. And he will get one inning today. As Brooks delivers a strike. So Gavre standing at the plate. One out. As this one will get thrown over to first. Fascia 
Why is the tag? But Walker Jr. in before the tag. As Justin Walker Jr. will go, but that one swung on and hit foul by Gavre. So an 0-2 count. Walker Jr. on your picture. And this one swung on, hit into the air, and will be not caught. As Kate Hole's not able to make the play, but they are able to get Walker then at second. High pop fly. So, oh. Coach Goff, I don't know if you can hear it on the broadcast, actually praising Kate Hole for coming in and at least taking command on that pop fly situation. Uh, didn't make the play, but able to still get the lead runner headed to second. So two outs. Tyler Powers now at the plate. He'll step off. As Gavre will go, and he is safe. So Mason Gavre with the stolen base. Uh, take a second look at it. And it looks like he did just get under the tag. Albrecht thought that he had him. So a runner in scoring position for the gray team. Tyler Powers at the plate with two outs. Brooks looking to get out of the inning. as Tyler Powers lifts the one out into left and it will be pulled in by Clohissey and that will do it for the top of the fourth. So the gray team's able to get one but not able to tie it up as we head to the bottom of the fourth, the gold team up 5-4.
bottom of the fourth inning. The gold team with a 5-4 lead here in the first installment of the fall ball season for the Purdue Boilermaker baseball team. Zach Fasha back to the plate for the gold team. So with an 0-1 count. 0-2, Kyle Wade off to back-to-back -back strikes. And that one outside, Fascia though, not buying it. So 1-2 the count. Fascia fouls that one back into the netting. So the count stays 1 2. And that one in the dirt from Wade evens the count at 2. Fasha and the gold team looking to extend their lead. Got off to a quick start in the first inning, able to bring four runs across. Since then, the, gold, or the gray team has held them in check as this one swung on and hit deep and foul down the third baseline. Jack Firestone out there trying to track it down. Fascia will trot back to home plate. Kyle LaPlante in the on deck circle for the gold team. Looks like Kyle Wade. Dealing with a bug or something as he's kind of waving his hands around, trying to clear something out, and then delivers a pitch. But it's a ball, so a full count, 3-2. Fascia looking to get the gold team off to a good start in this inning. This one's hit hard, grounded towards second. It is collected and out. That is Tyler Powers able to reel that in. And so it will be the first out as Fascia unable to reach safely. That one's inside, close to Kyle LaPlante. And this one swung on, hit high into center field as Mike Bolton Jr. gets underneath it and is able to pull it in for the second out of the inning. Now Jake Parr coming back to the plate for Team Gold. Two outs, nobody on. That one upstairs from Wade. Kyle Wade with his last inning of work today. It will be Eric Hildebrand to finish the fifth inning for Team Gray as Parr launches this one deep to the back wall and it is a ground rule double. So the freshman showing some pop with the bat, taking it all the way out to center field and one hopping it over the wall. So now runner 
in scoring position is Parr. Parr's a big guy, listed at 6'7", 225 as a freshman. As now, Clarissi will step to the plate. Clarissi had a base hit in his first at bat. Wade with a strike on the first pitch. So two outs, runner in scoring position. Team Gold holding a 5-4 lead. As there's another strike from Wade, makes the count 0-2. As you can see, par. Standing at second. And that one outside. Jake Stadler now the new man behind the plate for the gray team. As this one swung on and caught and left, and that will do it for the gold team. So Kyle Wade's day is done. As we will step away, but we will be back with the top of the fifth, the gold team on top, 5-4. Back here in the top of the fifth, the final inning of today's fall ball scrimmage. New pitcher for the gold team, that is Will Tenota. Tenota, a 6'2 freshman from Orland Park, Illinois, will get an inning of work today. As Jake Stadler will lead off for the gray team. Swung on, hit into center field. That will be collected by Tyler Acosta. So 
So one out for the gray team. And now Mike Bolton Jr. steps in for the gray squad. A strike from Tenota. And that one opposite shot from Bolton Jr. gets over the outstretched glove of Ryan Howe at third. And Bolton Jr. is safely aboard at first. So that's the start that the gray team needed, down one. Here in the top of the fifth. So Tenota, that one thrown over to Fascia at first, but Bolton Jr. in in time. Jack Firestone at the plate for the gray team. As Bolton Jr. is going to go. And he is thrown out at second. A nice job by Jeremy Schrock. Able to make the throw. And Holmberg applies the tag. So two away. Now for the gray team, although they're just going to send Bolton Jr. back to first. Reminder, this is a, a scrimmage, a fall ball scrimmage, so not playing with the same rules as your typical game would. As you take a look at Tenota. goes back to first. Very worried about Bolton Jr. and his speed. As this one's grounded to Howe at third, they'll get Bolton Jr. at second, but unable to turn it for two. So two away for the gray team, and Ben Nissel now coming to the plate. That one high and inside from Tenota. So a 1 0 count. Tenota goes back to first. Firestone back in time. Shork will throw this one to second. Uh, the hole not able to hold on to it to apply the tag. So Firestone in safely at second. Second look at it. You can see just one hops it, just misses the glove. Not able to squeeze it and apply the tag. This one a chopper to short, and Nissel out at first, and Fascia will throw it down to home plate just to test the arm strength, and so that will do it for the gray team. And 
as we'll head to the bottom of the fifth. The goal team up to bat, and this actually may be it. It does appear that will be the end of the scrimmage, so the goal team takes night one. As you can see, the team coming out to huddle. And you can see everybody putting their masks up and adhering to social distancing. Once again, this is the first game of the fall ball series. Next one will be tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern time on Facebook and YouTube. So once again, final from the first fall ball series, the gold team defeats the gray 5-4. to four. Thank you for joining us tonight. Everyone have a wonderful Friday evening.